During Ja'far ibn Mansur's time, this is a bit on the side just to wake you up a bit. Ja'far ibn Mansur was one of the first Abbasid Khalifs. Now he got a bit sick of the, po uh, of the poets of the time. Right, because the way the, the poetry used to work in those days, the poets used to make a poem up, go to a rich man, the, the king, the khalif, the, uh, the, the wazir, the governor, they used to say the poetry in their praise or something and they'd get a gift and that's how they earn their living. That's all they used to do. So he, uh, Ja'far Mansur, Abu Ja'far Mansur, he decided that from now on, I'm, I'm sick of these poets, I'm only going to give them something he announced that if you bring me a poem that I don't know. Right? That should be easy. Right? Somebody comes with a fresh poem, they come and they, they say it. So everybody, all these, new, all these poets used to come with brand new poems that they hadn't said to anybody else. They would come in front of him and they would say the poem and uh, Abu Ja'far Mansur would say, I know that poem. And he would repeat it word for word, straight away. And, the, uh, and the, uh, the, the poet would just be there scratching his head. And then you know what Abu Ja'far Mansur would say? He'd say, my, uh, my, my, my boy servant, my male servant, he knows it as well. He had a male servant who could memorize something by listening to it twice. Abu Ja'far himself could memorize something by listening to it once. So the boy servant would read it as well. Now this, uh, this uh, shahid, this boy, is even more dumbfounded. And then he says, even my female servant knows it. She could memorize something by, remember, by, by listening to it three times. So now all of these poets are coming and they're all going back empty-handed. Now they all met up in one place and they're all complaining that our industry is broken. We've got a massive problem in our industry, something needs to happen. So there's a, there's a, uh, there's a, there's a person, a, a narrator of hadith, Abdul Malik ibn Quraid, a, ma a massive lexicographer, right? Uh, he, he, was a, he was a man who codified a lot of our lexicography, uh, wrote numerous books on the subject. He says, I'm going to do something about this. So he went in dressed as a Bedouin into the king's court and he said, I have a poem. And the, uh, and the king said, the, the, the khalif said, you know what the story is, if, you, if, you, uh, if I know it, you don't get anything, and if, you, if I don't know that poem, then you get the weight of it in gold. So he said, okay, this is my poem. Sawtu safiri al-bulbuli hayyaja qalbi thamili al-ma'u al-zahru ma'an ma'a zahri lahdi al-muqali. And the king says, I know that. He says, no, hold on. Sawtu safiri al-bulbuli hayyaja qalbi thamili al-ma'u al-zahru ma'an ma'a zahri lahdi al-muqali. Wa anta ya sayyida li wa sayyidi wa mawlili fa kam fa kam tayammuni. Ghuzayil al-uqayqali qad taftuhu min wajnati min latmi wardi al-khajali. Fa qala la 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 la. Wa qad ghada muharwili. فَوَلْوَلَتْ وَوَلْوَلَتْ وَالْخُوذُ مَا لَطَّرَبًا مِنْ فِعْلِ هَذَا الرَّجُلِ فَوَلْوَلَتْ وَوَلْوَلَتْ وَلِي وَلِي يَا وَيْنَ لِي فَقُلْتُ لَا تُوَلْوِلِي وَبَيِّنِ اللُّؤْلُؤَ لِي قالت له حين كذا إن هط وجد بالنقل وفت شممتها ببناء نو وفتية سقونني قهوة كالعسل لي شممتها ببناء في أزكى من قرنفلي في وسط بستان حلي بالزهر والسرور لي والعود دن دن دنني والطبل طب طب طبلي تب طب طب تب طب 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 طبلي It's not a joke. It's these are words. It means something. And then he says. So he says, والعود دن دن دنني والطبل طب طب طبلي طب 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 طبلي والصف سق سق سقلي والرقص قد طابلي شوى شوى وشاهش على ورق سفر جلي وغرد الغمري يصيه على يصيح مللا في مللي ولو تراني راكبا على حمار أهزلي يمشي على ثلاثة كمشة العرنجلي والناس ترجم جملي في السوق بالقلقلني وفي القلقلة لي لكن ولكن والكل كعك كعك خلفي ومن حويل لي ولكنني مشيت هاربا من خشية العرنجلي عقنقلي إلى لقاء ملك معظم مبجلي يأمرني بخلعة حمراء كدم دملي أجر فيها ماشيا أجر فيها ماشيا مبغدا للذيل أنا الأديب الألمعي من حي أرض الموصلي نظمت قطعا زخرفت يعجز عنها الأدبلي أقول في مطلعها صوت صفير البلبلي. So now the king is just looking at his face and he's like he looks at his slave uh, his uh, his male servant. No, I don't know it. I didn't. I only heard it once. And the female, no, I only heard it once as well. I don't know it. He says, okay, fine. He accepted his defeat. He says, go and bring it written on something. So he goes outside and he brings it written on a pillar, a, a rock, which took 10 of the army to bring inside. 
So when they measured that with the box of gold they had, the treasure chest of gold, it emptied it all out. Now the king is sitting there, the khalif is sitting there scratching his head. Who can this be? Now they know, I mean he was a poet himself, he says the only person that could compose something as glamorous as that, right, as inimitable as that, it has to be Asma'i. Abdullah ibn, uh, Abdul Malik ibn Quraysh, Asma'i was his title. So he goes, call Asma'i. Asma'i, did you do that? He says, uh, yes, it was me. He said, why did you do that? He said, well, you've just you've broken the industry of the poets. I had to help them out. He says, give me back my gold. He says, no, I'm not going to give it to you. He says, give it to me. He says, I'll give it to you on a condition that you uh, re reinstate the industry where you give them gifts. He said, okay, fine. And then that's how it happened. Allah knows best, but that's what's related. Anybody memorized it, by the way? <laughs> Anybody worthy of being a khalif? That's memorized it by listening to it once. Come on, what's the, what's the state of our ummah today? 